them. So we're gonna open this bitch up. I wanted to say thanks, family and friends, but we are expected to be here. We should have been under better circumstances. All you fans, thanks a lot for showing up. And we got a lot of history in this joint. You know, me and Jeff got banned from this place for at least 20 years. So it's kind of ironic that we're having this here, and it's really, I think it's really cool. I haven't been in this building for a long time, but I got a lot of great memories here. I'm sure a lot of you guys share those with me. You know, I've got fun stories to tell because it's a celebration, right? See what was up. So I made this call. I went and auditioned for this band. It was really fucking horrible. And the good thing about it was Jeff worked in the lobby. Not the lobby. The desk where you walk in, where the fuck it's called. Um, and I saw him on the way in. I'm like, hey, dude, what's up? You know, talked for a second. I went in, played with these dudes that were clearly way too old for me and making up just horrible stuff. So I come out and Jeff's playing guitar. I went, that's very interesting. Yeah, I play guitar. And, you know, he's playing songs that I know, like way back then, it's like, you know, Def Leppard Wasted, you know, <laughs> Highway Star, old stuff, you know, and I'm like, you ever think about getting in a band? And, uh, you know, we exchanged numbers and talked on the phone, so that's what you did back then. <laughs> and, um, you know, it became history, but it, it's such a funny uh, story. I met him auditioning for another band, and he's working in the building outside, but... That's how I met my man, and that's how we started Slayer, and we just never looked back from there. Like I said, unlike myself, Jeff Hanneman hated Jägermeister. And born Jägermeister, I'm pretty sure everybody hates it. And that's what this is, but I had to come up here with something to cheer my fucking lost friend. Uh, the next story, uh, I don't know if you guys may or may not know this, but Jeff didn't drive. Uh, Jeff didn't have a car, he didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> I, think we're, uh, I think he was about 16, if I'm not mistaken, 16, 17, and uh, probably 16, so I'm going to be 17. And, you know, he had a driver's license once, and he, I think he had, like, two, you know, drunk driving convictions, and he said, that's it, I'm not driving no more, which is probably better for all of us. But because of that, I used to go pick him up for rehearsal, you know, we'd, talk, we'd practice in Tom's garage, and um, he lived in North Long Beach, it was like, I don't know, 10 miles to pick him up, but 10 miles in 1981 was a long fucking ways. You know, you think about it now, it's like, oh man, it's nothing, but... Back then, that takes up some of your day. So we would do that every day. You know, we were, we were in school. Well, Jeff quit school, but I was in school. Um, Tom was probably working, and I'd just go pick up Jeff, and we'd hang out in Tom's garage and make up stuff. You know, I'd play drums, he'd play riffs. He'd play riffs, I'd play drums, or I'd say vice versa, whatever. Um, and that's how we made up. I get, to this day, like, we've been rehearsing Jesus Saves, and it was either, it was either, I, I must have been playing the riff because I wrote that song and Jeff made up the drum part for it. <laughs> Sitting behind Dave's kit. Um, and, and, and then I would have to drive him home, or, or Tom would drive him home. But, you know, that being said, you know, we used to go to all the mom and pop record stores because back then that's pretty much how you uh, got new music. You know, there was no means, there was no means of the internet, obviously, so if you wanted to get something, you pretty much had to take, well, I'm sorry, is this your story or my story? Can I start again? Right. So you know, we're at the mom and pop stores. And it, there was no way to know if you got something new. I mean, we would spend 20 bucks and roll the dice on something good, something great, something completely shitty. But I remember, I can't remember if you bought it or I bought it, we got the first Merciful Fade EP. Yeah! And that was a gem, you know, that's why you did that. You didn't care if you lost 20 bucks and you got something good because you had to do that to find out what kind of great bands there were. Yeah! <laughs> and about that time, you know, Jeff was getting into punk, big time. Yeah! Yeah! And I didn't understand it because I was more of a, you know, Ronnie James Dio, Rob Halford kind of. Yeah! I, liked, I liked the metal music of the singles. You know, the punk seemed like a cheap 
down version with shitty singers. <laughs> but that's what it's supposed to be, and I didn't get it for a long time. And Jeff was my doorway to punk, and it really helped Slayer become kind of the kind of the bridge between the metal kids and the punk kids. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta tell you, when he shaved his head, I was pissed. How can you be in a metal band with a dude with a shaved head? <laughs> totally upset. That's who Jeff was, like Dino said. He's like, I'm shaving my head. And it was great, because that's that's what Jeff Game does. Oh, what else didn't I cover? Oh, I just like, Oh, this, this is Woo! I thought of this one. We came down today, me, my wife, a couple friends, and we're telling Jeff stories, and it, it sparked the idea for me to tell this one. But I think there's an open mic later, and I hope some of my friends tell some of the stories they told on the way down here, because I was laughing in traffic like I was going to get in an accident. It was awesome. <laughs> my first story starts, <coughs> I was uh, 80, I think it was, I know it was 88, because we were on South of Heaven. Yeah! Some of you guys are probably at this tour. It's when we um, picked up the West Coast for uh, Jude's Priest. Yeah. They were on the Ram It Down tour, and for some reason they decided to take out Cinderella on the beginning of that run. And I never heard of Cinderella. I thought it was the silliest thing I ever heard. So that was doing shitty. And then we get the call to go uh, open for Jude's Priest. And Jude's Priest was like, to this day, like if I'm. If I, if I get all crazy and nervous around people, it's priest or Sabbath, you know, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so we get on this road, we do the last 13 shows. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know if my wife knows this story, but we were um, at some bar, as we usually were. And it was me, Jeff, our tour manager, and I don't know who's in the car, but our tour manager's got a rental car. <clears throat> and you know, you probably know I hold my liquor well, I'm not usually a problem. <laughs> this day I was a problem. <laughs> and Jeff wore the brunt of it. It's pretty cool. I'll continue. Um, we're at this place, and I, we were, I think it was even the Judas Priest crew, and I was so excited to be hanging out with the Judas Priest crew because they knew Judas Priest, you know? I was just like, fuck yeah! <laughs> so I probably had a little too much fun. So we get in the car to go back to the hotel, wherever the hell it was, and um, Paul Springs is driving, and he puts me in the back seat, and I had a little too much which isn't usually my style, and, you know, but I'll say, as I'm about to say, I said, Paul, I think I'm gonna throw up, don't put me in the back seat, you know, I'll throw up quicker. He's like, no, you never throw up, you're fine. So I let it go for a mile, and I'm like, listen, dude, I think, I think there's gonna be an episode here. And, you know, he just didn't want to hear it from me. He's like, you're fine, you hold your liquor great. And I said, Paul, let me, I'm gonna tell you something. I won't puke in this rent car. And, you know, he, he wouldn't do anything about it, so, you know, it was that time, I started, at least I'm at a window seat, I started to roll down the window, it's one of them fucking child windows, it only goes down like halfway, <laughs> and luckily back then I didn't have all this, or it would have been much worse, so, you know, I, I'm doing my best to get this puke out of the truck, the truck, the car, and, you know, it didn't make it, <laughs> maybe a little bit made it, it's all on my arm, it's on my chin, it's all over the place. And Hanneman's sitting next to me, and he says, Dude, that's the best thing I've ever seen! <laughs> pissed off, I got puke all over my arm, and I just said, like, yeah. And I reached over and I wiped it off. He's like, that's the best thing ever! <laughs> so he was really stoked to have my puke on him because he had such a good time that day. And uh, I'll never forget that story and the, the ride down today it made me remember that again. I haven't told that in a long time, but... That was one of the first fun stories like that. I have one more. <laughs> I have one more. This one's really good. <laughs> we were in, um, and let me let me preface this and say I'm sorry, Rick Sales, but this is about you. <laughs> Rick Sales is our manager. He has been since 1986. I love Rick. And this is nothing against Rick, this is just a fun story I have from, um, uh, I think we were in Britain, and we're all at this dinner after, after a show we did in England, London, probably somewhere. And I mean, head honchos, you know, it was me, Jeff, Dave, Rick Sales, the promoters, and, you know, probably record people from, from the British record label, whatever the hell that was in Sun. <laughs> so we're there, and me and Jeff, you know, we'd always sit in bars, and we'd, pick shit up and throw it in people's drinks. And I think that day it was either peanuts or peas or something and 
Nobody's eating them. Nobody wants peas at a slayer table. I don't know what the fuck they're there for. So, you know, we made them weapons. And, you know, we're just throwing peas in people's drinks. And we were pretty damn good at it. So at one point, Rick decided he had enough. He went to the bathroom. And me and Jeff, Jeff was sitting right next to me again. And we didn't know what was going on. Yeah, yeah, Rick's going to the bathroom. He's got to do his thing, whatever. So we're just doing our thing. And we didn't even notice when Rick came back in. And we were sitting against the wall. And Rick comes back in with like a cloth napkin, you know? No, like you get in a restaurant, you took it in the bathroom and just doused it with water. And he fires it at us. Because he was just, he had enough of me and Jeff. Then, right between us, <laughs> smack on the wall. I went, really? They're gonna try it on the me and Jeff. And I go, Jeff, we should throw it back. He's like, you throw it, you throw it. You got, you're gonna hit him. And I'm like, you think, you think? He's like, throw it, do it, do it! And he's looking at me, and he doesn't even have time to look up before I stood up and fired it back and hit my friend Rick Seals right in the fucking forehead. <laughs> and it was loud enough for the entire restaurant to know what happened. And Jeff missed it. He, I look back, I'm like, dude, I already did it. He's like, fuck! <laughs> but what I'm getting at, Jeff was a character. I have, you know, a million stories, and it takes a while to get to all of them. I wanted to share those two with you. What else I got here? Oh yeah, you know this. Jeff hated being famous. Yeah. You, know, but, you know, he loved being on stage. And that's, you know, I love being on stage too. That's why we do what we do. You know, and he might have grumbled about it, but if you hit him up for an autograph and a picture, he'd always be a time for you guys. Yeah. Now I'll leave you with my stories. You know, we're here. Thanks for coming again. I sound like Tom. It's a very sad end to a great story. Remember my brother well.